Ever since the birth of modern science by Newton and Galileo four centuries ago, abstract mathematics has played a big role in physics. Velocity requires the knowledge of derivatives. Einstein's general relativity owes to the invention of non-Euclidean geometry. Basic notions from representation theory made it possible to formalize the notion of a fundamental particle. In this video, we will examine if this is true for complex numbers also. Is imaginary number just a fancy mathematical trick or are they really physical? Recent studies show that imaginary numbers are indeed real and physics can't be explained without them. The history of complex numbers is extremely rich and fascinating. It goes back to Arab algebraist Al-Khwarizmi and even before. It was formally developed by the Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler around the 18th century. The basic idea of imaginary numbers is very simple. We introduce imaginary number i, which when squared equals minus 1. Then, the solutions of x squared minus 1 are plus i and minus i. Famous philosopher Descartes did not like this trick, so he called the number i imaginary to differentiate it from what he called real numbers. We still use this terminology today. But, does the imaginary unit i exist? Classical physics, we do not need complex numbers to explain physics. Sure, it can help to simplify the equations, but we can do the same physics just with real numbers. Maxwell equations don't have an imaginary unit I lurking around. In electromagnetism, we can use the imaginary exponential functions to easily operate with sinusoidal functions, without the need of constantly invoking cumbersome trigonometric identities. But, in the end, we only take the real part of the final complex result. Similar is the situation in special relativity too. So, in classical physics complex numbers are just regarded as a tool to simplify calculations, rather than them themselves being a fundamental entity. However, in quantum mechanics, it seems imaginary numbers are deeply embedded in the structure of the physical world. Phenomenons like interference are present in quantum physics, so it should not come as a surprise that all quantum physics textbooks use complex numbers. In fact, they come up in our fundamental equations, like Schrödinger equations. However, Schrödinger himself could not understand why complex numbers could actually be necessary for physics at that fundamental level. In fact, he was not comfortable with it at all. He wrote a letter to Lawrence stating, what is unpleasant here, and indeed directly to be objected to, is the use of complex numbers. Psi is surely fundamentally a real function. A recent paper and further experiment show that actually quantum physics needs complex numbers, and there is no easy way around it. Physicists from Vienna and Spain have proposed experiments to test if we really need complex numbers in quantum mechanics. If we have two entangled particles generated from a single source, but analyzed at different places, it turns out that real quantum mechanics can adequately explain it. So, instead of single source, this new research suggested working on two sources and performing experiments. It turns out that if we have two sources, there are some predictions obtained via complex quantum mechanics that cannot be expressed by their real counterparts. These experiments have been performed by a research group in China and favor the paper's prediction. We really need complex numbers in quantum mechanics.